that ROI and regulation is just what everybody is focused on. And for good reason, because if that regulation isn't where somebody wants or needs it to be, then that's going to stop their adoption or moving forward with the technology. And if the ROI isn't there, like then it can just fall flat on so many levels. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 370. What's on tap for this year's Commercial UAV Expo? For that question, we turn to Jeremiah Karpowitz, Editorial Director of the Commercial UAV News. The Commercial UAV News is a leading source of news, insight, and analysis for the commercial drone market. It focuses on the use of drone technology in the heavy commercial sectors, such as surveying and mapping, civil infrastructure, power and utilities, mining, construction, emergency response, and precision agriculture. At the Commercial UAV News, Jeremiah has spent over a decade cultivating communities of all types, both in person and online. He has created articles, videos, newsletters, ebooks, and much more for these communities as a contributor and an editor. He has also shaped and defined various conference programs. Today, Jeremiah is focused on defining what it means to take the engagement that happens both in the physical and digital worlds, to the next level. Each year, the Commercial UAV News presents the Commercial UAV Expo, a leading international trade show and conference focusing on the integration and operation of commercial UAS. The Expo showcases the world's leading commercial UAS technology from vendors around the globe. After two years apart, more than 130 exhibitors and 1,955 drone professionals reconvened in person in 2021 to learn, connect, and drive the industry forward. This year's Commercial UAV Expo will be held on September 6th through 8th at Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. In this episode of the Drone Radio Show, Jeremiah shares details on this year's Commercial UAV Expo and his thoughts on the commercial drone industry. But first, if you like my podcast, I invite you to join the community of drone radio show advocates. It's a space where we can talk about the podcast and all things related to the drone industry. As a drone radio show advocate, you'll be able to talk about current shows, bounce around some ideas for episodes, suggest questions of upcoming guests, get some behind-the-scenes insights, and gain access to exclusive content. To become a Drone Radio Show advocate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. And by the way, if you have a great story on the use of drones that you'd like to share in a podcast, contact me at randy at droneradioshow.com. So let's learn about this year's Commercial UAV Expo and why you might want to attend, with Jeremiah Karpowitz of the Commercial UAV News. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Jeremiah to introduce himself. My name is Jeremiah Karpowitz. I'm the Editorial Director for Commercial UAV Expo and Commercial UAV News. And previously that had me focused almost entirely on the, the news and articles that was on the website. And I still do some of that, but lately I've gotten more involved with the conference program for the Commercial UAV Expo. And it's been really great to be able to connect some dots between things that are happening in the news space and some different interview targets and connecting all of that with what we're putting together for our conference program. Jeremiah, before we get into this year's Commercial UAV Expo, I'd like to get your perspective on what you think has been the biggest story in the drone industry in the past year. 
Well, I, I guess we can't talk about the last year without saying the words COVID-19, and that's still a, a reality and, I mean, something we're, we're still sifting through. But one of the things I think COVID did specifically for the, the drone industry was showcase the importance of having remote workflows or having workflows that utilize tools that were automated in some way, shape, or form, being able to perform work, maybe not at the push of a button, but to be able to set it up so that the person that is in charge of a certain assets or certain statuses doesn't need to be standing right there and having these these workflows that can have data plug into them or flow out of them like there's just a totally different understanding of kind of this remote workflow remote setup and remote uh, workforce in a way that that wasn't there specifically in the drone industry i mean obviously that's beyond the drone industry but we've really seen it in the space what do we know today that we didn't know a year ago? One of the big lessons over over the last year was about those remote workflows, but I mean also from for the past year we've seen the story of drone delivery come on in, in a much bigger way than, than I ever anticipated. I think some of that was driven by some of the the COVID deliveries, the the thought of a contactless uh, delivery but there's just been almost a, a sea change in terms of how that's being thought of and positioned. And I know some of that goes all the way back to the Amazon Jeff Bezos thing back in 2013, but all of that has been just really repositioned over, over the past year in a way that's been pretty surprising. Yeah, everything moves so fast. Seems like we were in the midst of a demonstration phase and all of a sudden people are actually getting things delivered by a drone. Yeah, and those demonstrations are still happening. I mean, Amazon just had news this week, and that's following up on something from Drone Up uh, a couple of weeks ago. So those kind of smaller scale, I don't want to say test programs, but I mean they're they're still happening, but they're they're being facilitated and built on in a way that they weren't 18 months ago. Okay, so let's talk about the commercial UAV Expo. Give us the rundown. When is it? Where is it? Et cetera. So Commercial UAV is, Expo is set to take place from September 6th through 8th. That's going to be in Las Vegas at Caesars Forum. And one of the big things with the Commercial UAV Expo that I mean, goes back to the very beginning of the event is that we really focus on the industrial and enterprise applications of the, the technology. We're talking about tasks that are dull, dirty, or dangerous. And what does it mean to utilize a drone to either augment or support those tasks to make them faster, cheaper, and safer? And I know it's easy to, to say all of that at a, at a high level, but one of the goals with the conference program is to really dig in and explore what that looks like from a practical sense. What does it mean that that construction manager no longer has to physically walk the site to get a sense of work that has or hasn't been done over the past week or even over the past day? And what does it mean for that somebody who's responsible to do a survey on a stockpile instead of having to literally get up on that stockpile and walk around it and potentially fall down and injure themselves? And we've heard tons of reports like that. What does it mean to them to the remove themselves from that situation and completely change the paradigm around safety. You know, those are the kind of use cases and insights that, that we build our conference program around. And I think we're able to, to go at a, in a much deeper level with that than, than some of the others that are out there. Based on past events, how many people are you expecting at this year's expo? Well, and then we then we start talking about COVID again in terms of how that impacted where we were, where things were, and where we were going. In 2019, we were at over 3,000 uh, attendees, and that was a high water mark for the event. And we were just just feeling so great and enthused about where we were at and what was going to be the 2020 version of the event, which didn't come to be and turned into a virtual event, which is a, I mean, it's basically apples and oranges when you're talking about events. But last year for the 2021 edition of the event, which we were all in masks for and was a quite an experience on, on multiple levels, but we had over 2000 uh, attendees there. So I can tell you that our our goal is to get to and, and surpass our 2019 numbers. And we're feeling good about what that looks like. How about the exhibitor space? 
our sales team confirmed we're currently at 215 exhibitors and counting. So we're still a few weeks out. So we'll see that that number increase even more. And then in terms of who these companies are, I mean, it, it's everything across the, the drone ecosystem. We're talking drone hardware, drone software, service providers, just everything that really defines the drone industry, as you might call it, you can find on, our, on that trade show floor. How would you characterize the evolution of the Commercial UAV Expo? The origins of Commercial UAV Expo really go back to the SPAR 3D conference, which was an event focused on surveyors and for 3D scanning technology. And we saw that there was an opportunity with that in terms of this new tool that was capturing this information. And that's where the Commercial UAV Expo started. And it really started in that kind of space that was focused on surveying and mapping. We had a look at the other industries, but we've really grown from that into, into focusing on numerous other industries, but also digging in that much further into how this technology is being used and where it's making a difference. So I think the difference between those early days of the technology and now is just a matter of value. And that in those early days, the value was more aspirational. It was more about potential. And now it's about reality and like what that reality means to various types of users. Obviously that's, that's going to be different, but it's there and it's attainable. And that wasn't something we could say with as much certainty in those early days. Is there a theme for this year's show? Drone delivery is there's a lot of it at the event this year. And, and I think we're going to be able to get into the vision for that technology, both in terms of what it's meant to get to today and what it means to build on that and where it's going tomorrow. So that's a big one. Outside of that, that focus on different verticals is something that really defines our conference program. So being able to, to lay out the difference the technology is making in everything from the agriculture space to construction to energy, you'll see that every year at our event, but the themes, they're, they're individual themes on all of those tracks that relate to everything from different tools that are being used to how given platform is creating value. What are the key highlights for this year's event? You know, there's a few really great sessions that I'm, I'm personally looking forward to. We've got a drone visionary session that I, I think is just going to be really incredible. Our construction session has a number of different really defined presentations that, again, get into those kind of specifics of where the technology is creating value. But we've also built in time so that those presenters can kind of come together and talk through some highlights and, and takeaways that they discuss on, on stage and that attendees can get from that. And, you know, that some of that goes back to the value of the event as well. And it, it comes back to how are people able to connect with one another and what does it mean to find the right person to, to take that next step with the adoption of the technology? Because you can find information about drones or any other piece of technology just on Google or at certain other places, but being able to, to connect with somebody and talk through what it means to take that next step, like that's really the value of the event. And that's something that, that you can do on the, on the show floor with one of the speakers at the, the sessions. And it really goes back to that in-person connection that we really saw the value of in a, in a whole different way when we couldn't do it in, uh, in 2020. Jeremiah, what can you tell us about this year's program? Our keynotes open up uh, both days of the event. We've got one focused on, on drone delivery. And then the other one will be a regulatory update um, in terms of how the, the individual sessions are organized. For the most part, they're going to find some specific presentations from a set of folks and then panel discussions. And there's also some roundtables and that those are actually independent of the, the sessions, but we've got a number of different roundtables that you can currently sign up for to be part of online. And those are a really great opportunity to, to further that networking because those are limited to a number of seats. I think we cap it at, at 20 or, or 25. And once those are, are full, they're, they're full. But those are moderated by somebody. And there's a lot of introductions and connections that are made as part of those. Who are this year's keynote speakers? So we're really looking forward to Keller Renato, who is set to give one of our keynote addresses. He's the CEO of Zipline. And if you haven't seen any of his, his TED Talks, he's, he's an excellent speaker and has been somebody who's really laid out what the, 
the present and future of the drone delivery space looks like. And we're looking forward to seeing him kind of talk through the the logistics side of that that looks like. So it's not just going to be about drone delivery, but about where the technology itself is at and where it's going. And our day two keynote is also going to be be focused on drone delivery, but it's going to be much more dug in. And we're going to have Jay Merkel from the FAA. He's going to be on stage with Tom Walker from Drone Up, with Dallas Brooks from Wing. And it's going to be a conversation that really gets into how each of them believes the future of the space is going to come together. And we're looking forward to see what aligns with that, what doesn't align with that, what might better align with that. And, you know, one of the, the things Tom said about being on stage with folks like that is, is he's looking forward to being able to learn from what others have to say up there. And if he's learning something, that means the audience is going to learn something. And that's what we want to cultivate. Who should attend this event? I mean, who do you think would get the greatest value? Anybody who is focused on workflows for a given organization or the technology that is being used or could be used. It's just tough to call out because where that falls into somebody's program, it just, it it just varies. You know, that that can be anything from an engineering surveyor, photogrammetrist, the director of operations, the IT manager, it just depends. But anybody that wants to have a better understanding of how these tools can make a difference to enabling you to do a given task in a faster, cheaper, or safer way. You're going to find something for for you and for your team at the Expo. What about the networking opportunities? Yeah, so we've got the the roundtable events. You can sign up to be a defined part of those. Outside of that, we've got coffee breaks throughout the days. There's a couple happy hours that ends the first day of the event and the, and the second one. And th- those are kind of impromptu networking events that allow everybody to, to just kind of mingle together. But the best way to, to set up to find meetings as part of those or through those is, is with the app. And that's been one of the, the benefits of further embracing some of these solutions that came about in the, in the COVID times was being able to, to make connections online. But I think that was, that was the gap then too, was that you were kind of limited to just being able to connect with somebody online or set up a, a Zoom room. And like, that's fine in so much as it is, but being able to, to set that up through the app and then actually meet in person as part of a a networking event, like that takes it to the next level. And we have a defined networking area where I mentioned you can do that and these happy hours are taking place, but there's also a space on the floor that facilitates that throughout the entire event. Speaking of networking, how would you describe the value of networking at events like the Commercial UAV Expo? I mean, the networking just, it just makes all the difference. Like I can get information from wherever, but being able to provide context around what it means for me to take that next step. And that next step can be anything that can be, I'm just thinking about how this technology could make a difference to me. I can get a better understanding of what that looks like if I'm able to talk to the right person and have the right conversation. It's the same level too. If I've already got a program up and running and I want to decrease my costs because I see they're going in the wrong direction, like networking with the with the right person is going to allow me to to understand what that can and should look like in a way that Google just isn't or the wrong contact that I find from wherever isn't. So that does make all the difference. Let's talk about the industry for a moment. What key trends do you see working today that are driving the industry? It still goes back to the value, to the ROI and regulation. I I, I know I've said that that a lot. I might have even said that on this show at, at one point, but that ROI and regulation is just what everybody is focused on. And for good reason, because if that regulation isn't where somebody wants or needs it to be, then that's going to stop their adoption or moving forward with the technology. And if the ROI isn't there, like then it can just fall flat on so many levels. And that was that was a real challenge in the early days of the technology where we 
a lot of vendors were out there and they were selling folks on the potential of it. And some companies made an investment in that on the potential of it, but then the ROI wasn't there. And they said, all right, well, we're never doing this again. And that wasn't really the fault of the technology or even the users, but not having that foundation, like that was just so harmful. And I think as an industry, we're getting past that, but I mean, those baseline themes and challenges are still there. They, they look a bit different today than they did last year or five years ago, but it's an evolution of that kind of you know, just, just something that's, that's top of mind for everybody. Where do you see the industry headed? Any innovative drone applications that we might see? Gosh, it's tough because some of it is just so baseline, like the, you know, the concept of a complete drone solution or the easy button drone solution that was out there a few years ago in, in a big way. And I've seen that die down. And with advances in the technology and even the regulation, like that is more of a reality now, but what that actually looks like, like for an energy company, like what that looks like for Dominion is going to look a little different than it's going to look for PG&E. But being able to move forward with that and have that be part of your defined workflow, like that, that feels like it's changed in a good way. What are you looking forward to most at this year's commercial UAV Expo? Those couple sessions with the drone visionaries and even the energy session that, again, we've set up some defined presentations for, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to. And then being able to connect with some folks that I've only been able to connect with online for a while now. Um, you know, we said we 2021 edition of the event. We were able to hold it and had really positive feedback from that. And it was really great energy on the on the floor, but there were still a lot of people that, that weren't able to make it out that year. And we're not hearing anywhere near as much in terms of folks not being able to make the event this year. So just being able to connect in person and it's cliche to say, but I mean, it, it's just such a different conversation you can have with somebody and that rather than just go one or two rounds or one or two layers with them, you can go three or four or five or six. And that's stuff that just resonates and stays with you and can give you action items. Uh, I know it certainly does for me. I had so many different ideas about what was going to be the 2022 program after just having conversations with people at the event. And some of that was were things that I set up. Others were just when you're walking by and just happen to catch up with somebody and there's just no other way to facilitate any of that. What advice would you give to attendees so that they can maximize the value and the experience of attending the event? I would say the best thing you can do is is do a little bit of research going into the event. And that's not something you have to, to sit down and like put together some report or anything like that. But if you're waiting in line for coffee and just scrolling through your inbox or your newsfeed, instead scroll through the exhibitor list and see if there's some companies that you've either heard about or curious uh, about and check them out or check out who from their team is going to be at the event and even hit them up on LinkedIn or just put them on your, your list to stop by and have a conversation with them. And too, like then the speakers as well. Like there's a ton of really, of really great speakers that come to the event because they want to talk through the details of what they're doing, but then also have conversations with folks about the, the challenges that they're coming up against or how they might be looking to utilize the, the technology. So getting the most out of the event is, is about being able to, to come to it with some ideas around what your next step looks like. And your next step can be at the beginning or, or very much along the path of adopting the technology, but you can get there. Is there anything that we missed that we should talk about? I know we talked about the exhibit floor, but being able to see what a company like Skydio or Sony or Microsoft is set to showcase, like I'm personally looking forward to that. And then there's some other companies as well, like Emicent or Camaris and, and Brink. And these are all folks that are that are doing really great stuff in the space. And I'm, I'm sure most of your listeners have, have seen some of the, the headlines from those companies, but being able to, to go into those booths and talk specifics with some of the leaders of those companies that are going to be there in one way, shape, or form, that's just something that I'm looking forward to. Are there any companies that you're keeping your eye on this year? American Robotics is doing some really great stuff. And I mean, that, that connects to what Skydio is doing as well. That concept of drone programs at scale, like 
for so long, that's been this aspirational, eventually the technology is, is going to get there and enable that. But what it meant to actually support that, like outside of DJI, I don't know that any company really could. Like there were a lot of companies for years out there that said they could, and certainly companies in the past and in the present want to, but who can actually do that? And that's something I'm keeping my eye on and with uh, American Robotics and, and Skydio. And you know, there's another handful too, but being able to support drones at scale from a production and manufacturing perspective, that's been really interesting. And for my final question, Jeremiah, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? So the message for the drone industry is really about what the drone industry is, because the, the drone industry is really this collection of various people that are working in different sectors and in very different jobs. And we talked about that in terms of it so many different people have different job titles or somebody who has the same job title might be doing something very different that's aligned with the technology. But all of that comes together at Commercial UAV Expo to kind of showcase what this journey looks like. And I think some people might come to the event with this expectation of, okay, I'm going to go there and find the answer. But the expo isn't about the end of that journey. And it's not even about the beginning of it, but it's about that next step. And regardless of, of where you are, because, and being able to, to take that with, you know, as a result of a conversation or something that you saw on stage and then further discuss with that person and gave you an idea in a way that you wouldn't have if you were just Googling that. And, you know, that's one of the, the ways I've, I've tried to, to position and even build the conference program is what's here that's ungoogleable. Um, you know, I, my brain always goes, goes back to, to search. And when I find myself thinking, oh, what is my dad's birthday again? And almost inherently go to Google that. It's like, oh, you can't Google that. So what are these things that you can't Google? Like, that's what I want the drone industry to be able to, to find and cultivate at this event. That's it for episode 370 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Jeremiah Karpowitz of the Commercial UAV News. I want to thank Jeremiah for taking the time to speak with me. As a reminder to the Drone Radio Show advocates, check out the Patreon page for a little additional content from my conversation with Jeremiah. If you want to learn more about the Commercial UAV News or want to connect with Jeremiah, check out the webpage at commercialuavnews.com. You can register for the Commercial UAV Expo at expouav.com. Use code SAVE100 for a free Expo Hall Pass or $100 off a conference pass. If you like the Drone Radio Show, then I'm sure you're going to like being part of the community of Drone Radio Show advocates. I look forward to seeing you at patreon.com slash drone radio show. Check out the Patreon site for exclusive content now. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels. Thank you.